Good morning. This is Wes Baldwin, United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bo, and this is my husband, Tony Williamsburg, the music director. And uh, we are recording this worship service for the benefit of our community and for all those who could use some comfort during this time when we are self-isolating um, to be able to, and social distancing, to be able to decrease the um, spread of the pandemic. So with that, um, we, uh, we just have a few announcements then. Um, certainly our music series is also um, canceled. However, we will be posting some music Yes. Um, we will be posting some music um, that, uh, that for, for those who would like to also be able to access that, both will be available either on YouTube, looking for Tony Lansberg's um, uh, identity there, or at our Facebook page. And I just wanted to let everyone know that, uh, you know, the priority is to be healthy, and to um, stay strong, to be in comfort, to use this time for self-reflection. That is what our season of Lent is about, and to be in care and concern for one another and for those less fortunate, for those who cannot find the basic needs because the shelves are empty or who can't get out to shop, to check in on your neighbors and one another. Um, we have uh, also the, uh, a few questions people were asking. We do not have Wi-Fi here at the church, so this is not something that is live feed. We may experiment, experiment with doing live feed next week by doing it from home where we have Wi-Fi, but uh, this has been posted after. And uh, so um, that's one thing. Also, people were asking about their offerings and tithes and uh, pledges, and so you may send those uh, to the uh, mailing address of the church, which is 26 Douglas Hill Road, West Baldwin, 04091, if you would like. Um, that would help us as we continue to pay our bills, um, even while we are, just as all of us at home are having to do. So that's another uh, question that had come up. Um, as always, you can call, text, or email me for any other information, and please to let us know any prayer concerns that you have. And um, so with that, we did want to celebrate our birthdays um, and anniversaries, which uh, this week are all, um, uh, let's say the 26th and the 29th. We have Laura Martin, birthday on the 26th and the birthdays of Josh Bunmeyer and Chris Sear. So we can sing happy birthday for them. <laughs> songs or hymns that uh, we have done over the last couple of years, uh, They That Wait Upon the Lord, is based on uh, scripture, Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verse 31. And uh, I just wanted to share that with, with you this morning. And it, it is written, uh, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So the, the phrase, uh, you know, 
they that wait upon the Lord uh, is is the waiting is meaning the the, the sense of expecting. Um, it, it, it's based on uh, to wait on Yahweh means to wait for His help. It means to to trust in Him. It means to put our hope or confidence in Him. Um, it, it is a, a you know if you think about the theme of, of Lent, it's, it's a it's a season of, of waiting, expecting for the resurrection. And I think this this is, is very timely. We know that this season of Lent is is very different than uh, past seasons of Lent. There there's obviously uh, the, the health concern um, and a, a lot of people may be experiencing different feelings uh, feelings of anxiousness um, fear helplessness isolation but we, we can't lose sight that you know as we wait upon the Lord we, we pray that we can continue to be driven by faith not by fear not by anxiety not by helplessness not by isolation but be sure that we, we are being prayerful, we're being supportive of each other, uh, that we uh, know that God is, is working around us and through us, and God is with us always. Amen. And now let us prepare, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They should walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord.
So let us look to you to understand where we have fallen short of your mark. We are like the grass, shaken in the wind. We are inexpressibly weak. Leave us not to ourselves, but dwell in our hearts and guide our thoughts and actions. In Jesus' name, amen. We did all have our candle extinguishing ritual. Sunday in Lent, we extinguish this candle as a sign of our fear that doubts your love and care for us. Let us pray. You have set before us a banquet of life and love, good God. Why is that too good to believe? Why is it even too hard to enjoy? Or imagine. You have promised us abundant love and even called us brother and sister in your son Jesus. Prepare us to celebrate the feast by a life of generosity and joy. Teach us the way of love instead of the way of fear. Amen. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 18. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that in your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap upon empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
the word of God for the people of God. Amen. And our song response is 285. shortcomings of the world and we feel unable to do anything about them. Jesus takes us to examples from our personal lives precisely because we must learn how to change ourselves in order to both learn the process of change and change one little chunk of the world at a time, ourselves, each one of us. The key concept that Jesus repeats is withdraw and spend time with God. Practice your changes in secret, and the results will be seen openly. Jesus offers three specific examples for this withdrawing with God. Giving in private, praying in private, and fasting in private. All three of these have long been considered by the church as spiritual disciplines. Actions that we cannot do on our own, but that we can be made capable of doing by conscious contact with God, working in collaboration with the Holy Spirit within us. This is why Paul refers to athletics so often when speaking of spiritual disciplines. No one just decides to run a marathon tomorrow and succeeds at doing it. The original Greek messenger who ran the first marathon was a soldier named Phaedipides. He was charged with bringing news of victory from a battlefield near the town of Marathon in Greece to Athens in 490 before Christ. He ran the 25 plus miles without stopping to announce the defeat of the Persians. And after delivering his message, 
collapsed and died. No, you have to train to run a marathon. You start small. Maybe you start by walking. You alternate running and walking. You run on a regular schedule. You don't run in front of the big crowd of enthusiastic supporters either. That's not for all this practice time. You run by yourself or in small groups. This is the metaphor we need to follow in our spiritual disciplines. Only our running is to God. So what did Jesus teach us in today's lesson read? Giving to the poor. Do good and beautiful things for others, and don't be caught doing them. Give regularly in order to be more giving. The biblical practice of tithing allows for everyone of all different incomes and resources to experience giving. You give a percentage rather than a dollar amount. If 10% is more than you can make in your budget right now, you work up to it, but you set a percentage, even if it's 1%. Also note that plenty of people lie and cheat and steal in secret. We find it amusing when criminal, criminals are caught on video doing these things, unaware that they've been in public. Why is it that we humans want to be seen when we give, but not when we take? Second was prayer. Prayers can either connect you to God's presence, or they can raise you a little in the public eye. They can't do both. Also, there are no pretty phrases or fancy words needed to pray. That's just empty noise, Jesus says. Real prayer comes from your heart. You talk to God. And you don't forget to spend time listening to God's responses. Jesus models a prayer in four parts. The Lord's Prayer that we pray every week together. Those four parts, who God is as a loving parent. Join God's team. What does it want the same things that God wants for the world? The kingdom of God on earth. Our needs and concerns, and asking for God's help to get through the day, one day at a time. Now Jesus comments that God sees his kingdom as a place where forgiveness is freely received and supposed to be freely given. Now fasting. That's a tricky one. We don't often do fasting these days. We could think of dieting, perhaps, but I would say think instead of boundaries. Think of opportunities to say no to yourself. We don't like that word no. We haven't liked it since we were two, and it hasn't changed much. Fasting from food was a simple and physical way to go without in ancient times, to to discipline yourself. But in modern times, and even then, we could practice other types of boundaries. We could put a boundary around handheld devices or media time or screen time. We could fast from the news or from shopping or spending money. Whatever it is we're fasting from, when we're hungry, when we're physically hungry, our body sends out signals. Our stomach growls, we might get grouchy or lightheaded. When we experience hunger, whatever that may be, for the thing you've given up, maybe it's anxiety. I just want to check the news one more time. Maybe something different's happening. When we experience hunger for what we've decided to give to God, use it as a time to pray and pray something like, Lord, I desire you more than blank. More than I pray blank, I pray time with you. I don't like feeling uncomfortable, Lord, so I give these feelings to you. Help me to feel right with you. It's this last step of fasting that's the 
part of letting God change you. It's uncomfortable. You need to bring that discomfort to God. It requires lots of practice. You don't wait for a fun time of year like Lent to practice it. You need to start giving God control of your life one little piece at a time. Just as we give one little percentage at a time. So our spiritual exercise plan is number one. Dedicate the first thing in the morning or that doesn't work in your schedule, the last thing at night, to be alone with God. Do not do this lying in bed, which you might fall asleep. And spend at least 30 minutes with God. Don't worry, and don't try to work up to it. Start with 30 minutes. Second, pray. Try using the formula. Who is God to me? Help me to want what you want, God, for the world and for myself. Here are my needs and concerns. I give all my burdens to you. And help me to stay right with you, no matter what happens today. Third, boundaries and submission. Listen to God wants you to turn over. Is it TV time? Spending money, selfishness in how you plan your week's activities. Or perhaps it's to take on a new habit, giving to those in need, doing service, volunteering. But ask God what you should do, and then God, ask God for God's help to do it. And then check in with your progress each day in your dedicated time with God. Now Jesus knew about human nature. And he knew there was a simple fact. If we don't withdraw from public view, we'll turn our spiritual exercises into a show for others, which sabotages any effort to change ourselves. Jesus tells us instead to work on being more holy or spiritual or right with God in private. Everyone will be able to tell the difference on the outside when we change on the inside. Through practice, the habits of generosity and prayer and surrendering to boundaries become second nature to us. Instead of seeking attention, we'll seek God's presence. Instead of seeking more for ourselves, we'll seek ways to give to those in need without anyone noticing. Instead of rushing to satisfy every impulse that wanders through our minds, we put boundaries around our activities and our choices. We can be changed by God from being selfish and impatient to being generous, gentle, and spiritually mature. The world won't change unless we change. And we won't change unless we pull away from the world's games, pressures, obsessions, values, we need to be in solitude, in God's presence, where the seeds of God's likeness can begin to grow and be nurtured in us. If that life takes root in us, we can be sure it will bear fruit, the fruit that can change the world. Amen. We continue our worship by lifting up our joys and concerns. Again, the prayer list can be accessed just as this bulletin online. And to those that we have listed here, I would just add the whole world that is struck with fears, difficulties, isolation, losses, people losing family members to this disease, to caregivers overstressed and overburdened, to running out of the supplies they need to save all the patients that come to their hospitals and clinics. We just want to blanket our world around this issue with prayer. 
and especially all these that we lift up in concern. We know that if, as you may be watching this, you have concerns on your heart, and I invite you to lift them up to God now. And together we say, Lord, hear our prayers. And hand in hand with those burdens we lift up are the joys. Yesterday we went on a short trip up to Wyndham and there were 20 cars in a little pullout across from the lake watching the sunset. I've never seen that many cars in that little pullout before. It is wonderful that isolation has brought people back to those simple pleasures. And I know that at home we have those joys in our heart. We lift them up to God now. And we say together, Lord, hear our praise. And we continue with that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We would at this time continue our worship by lifting up our tithes and offerings. So I again remind you that if you are so moved, you can send your giving to our mailing address. And we can be thinking of all the ways in which we can give to one another and who might need it checking in on during this time as we listen to our offertory music.
gifts of the Holy Spirit to your people. We give you thanks for all your manifold blessings and ask your grace to use them always to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is I Surrender All, number 354. Send into our hearts the peace of heaven and grant us peace. Send all who are troubled to you for help. You are our God. You set the captives free. Give hope to the hopeless, help to the helpless. You lift up the fallen and you are the haven of the shipwreck. Grant that we may end our lives well pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we sing number 666, Shalom to you.
Praise the 